Hi, I'm Mike Matre, your host of Healthcare Matters, where the medical and legal communities come together to discuss healthcare matters. Today's guest is Whit Johnson. Whit is a shareholder with Curry, Johnson, Griffin, and Myers in Jackson, Mississippi. Welcome to the program, Whit. Thanks. Uh, glad to be here. In your defense of medical liability claims, what have been the most common errors or liabilities in physician use of electronic medical records? How do you advise your physician clients on avoiding these errors, liabilities in the future? Um, well, this is going to be a scary thought uh, because most of the errors that I've had to deal with have actually been errors not from my client, but from some other health care provider that adversely affected him. Uh, for example, you know, we talk about EMR as being a relatively recent thing. But in certain areas, it's, it's been around for a long time. Uh, for example, at pharmacies, uh, they would have the, the individual pharmacists would have uh, each patient's individual drug log, for back, lack of a better way to put it. And I have had two cases where my client got sued, or two different clients, got sued for having um, uh, prescribed certain medication and they weren't the ones that prescribed the medication. The pharmacist inputting it had just input the wrong doctor because my client was the regular doctor and this was somebody else who had the patient had seen out of town or in another clinic or something like that. And I ended up having to go pull the original hard copy of the script from the pharmacy to show that my guy hadn't, hadn't written the script. Um, another case I had that I recall was a, a, a drop-down box issue where the whole issue in the case was it was a, a uterine rupture case after, a, uh, after multiple C-sections, and the whole issue was, was the patient in uh, preterm labor. Well, the, the nurse who was seeing the patient when she first got admitted, the drop-down box for why are you here included onset of labor, and that's what she clicked because it was closest. And the patient was like 32 weeks and just had some uterine irritability. But the closest thing to what it was was uh, um, onset of labor. So that's what, they, that's what she clicked. And now the whole trial I'm having to face, well, look, the nurse knew she was in labor. How come you couldn't tell she was in labor? Um, from an individual physician standpoint, I think what I, what I see is, is uh, again, just not paying attention. I actually had a case one time where this wasn't an issue, but the, the medical records, uh, it, it involved a patient who had been um, paraplegic and wheelchair bound for, th for 30 years from an accident he'd suffered when he was a teenager. Well, my client who's examining him, who is examining him is just clicking boxes and he clicks gate and station normal. So, you know, uh, the things I see really are almost all related either to somebody else who's not paying attention or to the physician himself who is not paying attention. Excellent. Well, Whit, thank you for joining us today on Healthcare Matters, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Sounds good. I hope this helped. Thank you. HIPAA data breaches are emerging as one of the largest systemic risks a hospital or group faces in the modern healthcare delivery system. What risk management advice would you give physician clients for maintaining HIPAA confidentiality with their EMR system?